Lexington, Ohio, and the lush green rural setting surrounding it play host this weekend to the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship Series and a full weekend of racing at the famed Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Up next, the IMSA Prototype Challenge drivers take on the track known as the most competitive in the U.S. right here only on NBCSN. It's round three of IMSA Prototype Challenge from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Welcome in everyone, I'm Brian Till along with Jeremy Shaw. Lexington, Ohio and the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course are located about an hour north of Columbus, Ohio, or about an hour south of Cleveland, depending on how you want to look at it. And speaking of looking at things, let's take a look at the weather. It's in the low 60s right now, but it'll warm up a bit before the checkered flag, partly cloudy and most importantly, essentially no chance of rain. Take a look at this racetrack, 2.4 miles of frustration with just a couple of places to pass, the keyhole being one of those locations that you want to get it done. Also, turn four as you head into madness. You can force a pass maybe in five or over in turn nine, but then through the carousel, one of the slowest parts of this racetrack, back down the front straightaway. That's a lap at Mid-Ohio's Jeremy Shaw. We should see some awesome action today as the car's out on their warm-up lap. Take us through the grid. Yeah, good morning. Thank you very much indeed, Brian. This is round three of the IMSA Prototype Challenge for 2021, so halfway through the sixth race season. 15 cars we're expecting, although we're not sure whether Jim Cox, the car number 91 for Riley Motorsports, will start this race. Row five, Bruce Hamilton, car number 60 for Wolver Racing. Olivier, alongside Duquesne for Robillard Racing. Car number 43 is Joe Robillard. Row two on the outside, Alan Brynjolfsson, winner last time out at Sebring in car number seven. The Vault Racing with Archangel Ligier, alongside the similar Ligier for MLT Motorsports. Championship leader, car number 54, is Josh Sarchet. Onto the front row of the grid, well, it's all Duquesne D08 chassis. On the outside, for JDC Motorsports in car number 40, with Keith Grant, and on the pole position, again, for, as it has been for every race this season, for Mühlner Motorsports America in car number 21 from Germany is Moritz Kranz. And they are slow in the starter zone, flag waves. We're racing at Mid-Ohio. It is on down to turn four, the first heavy braking here, and Kranz drops back a little bit, but then under braking, able to slide in front of the 40. Yeah, you know, it's going to take a little while to get these tires up to a full working temperature here uh, because it is fairly cool this morning. And I'm a little bit surprised there that, uh, that, that the Grant brothers, uh, in, this, in this case, it was a, a, a Keith, I think, who started the race. He, he has a huge amount of experience around here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, primarily in uh, former Atlantic cars, but he's also done this race a couple of times. I'm surprised he wasn't being a little, little, little more aggressive on that opening stance. So it is uh, Moritz Kranz who leads this race. Well, when you look at Kranz and the vast experience that he has, I was talking to him yesterday, he said he has over 10,000 laps at the Nordschleife uh, at the Nürburgring. So this is a guy who has won sports car championships as you see that 21 weaving back and forth down the front straightaway, doing exactly what you said, Jeremy. That's trying to find some temperature and some pressure in these Michelin tires. Yeah, and it's going to take a few laps, I think, uh, to, to really get these tires working well. But that was a really good start for Moritz Kranz using his ne not necessarily experience here at Mid-Ohio, but in general on the cooler tires. I mean, he, he's used to all sorts of weather conditions at the Nürburgring. So uh, I, I'm sure just a little bit of coolness in the air really isn't a problem from him. But that was a great start by Kranz. And he's now got a yeah, relatively comfortable 10, 10 or 12 car left lead over Keith Grant with Z Josh Sarche, the championship leader. He'll be handing over that car to Dakota Dickerson, who's won twice here already in the uh, prototype challenge over the last few years, and also success in other series here as well later on in this one hour and 40 minute race. Well, I'll tell you who got the great start, and that's the number six of Dan Goldberg, who's picked up a couple of positions. Alan Brynjolfsson in that bright yellow number seven has dropped back to six after lining up in fourth Antoine Canoe. There with Conquest Motorsports now up to fifth, but Goldberg having a great run early in the number six. Dan Goldberg also running in the Imsen WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race later this afternoon. So he's gotten double the amount of track time practicing in both the WeatherTech series sessions as well as the prototype challenge sessions. 
Yeah, yeah, indeed. And yeah, track time is so important uh, uh, for, for anybody. And uh, I, I was a little bit surprised that Moritz Kranz didn't elect to do the same sort of thing because he's doing an awful lot of racing in all sorts of series all the way around the world, it seems, these days. But uh, some good battling here. Antoine Camo, there is an interesting story. He's arriving at number 34 car for JMF Motorsports and Conquest Racing. Uh, this is his uh, debut in the IMSA Prototype Challenge, but he got uh, last year he ran the... Uh, Indy Pro 2000 Championship, part of the Road to Indy, the open wheel series that uh, lead towards the NTT, NTT IndyCar series. Uh, and he, he did pretty well. I mean, he's a, he's a gentleman driver. He's not a professional driver. He's a, 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 a stock trader by profession. Uh, he just this, does this for fun, but he's pretty darn good. And he's got a lot of experience previously in sports cars in the Radical Championship. And so get it hopping into this uh, Duquesne for the first time for him. Uh, he's only done one test at Putnam Park a couple of weeks ago. No testing here at Mid-Ohio before he hopped into the car on Friday for practice. So he's done a really good job and holding down the fifth position at the moment in car number 34. When I spoke to his team owner, Eric Bachelard, whom I used to race with yesterday, he said, I think we can do better than that. And I expect a little bit more in the race. That's what you're seeing. And what you're also seeing is Keith Grant. I've got to, I've got to admit, Jeremy, I expected Maurice Krantz to pull away here in the early going. He's got a lot of experience in sports cars, but Grant not letting Krantz get away at all. And in fact, tried to slide the nose underneath him there in the keyhole and Grant's really under pressure from Grant as they head down the back straight away into four. Yeah, but you know, Grant is so experienced around here and, he, and he, a lot of success. Uh, he's won the the Masters Championship in this uh, prototype challenge before. Uh, a, a lot of wins in, in former Atlantic open wheel cars around here. So, you know, he knows he's got a good car. He knows that uh, he and his brother, uh, David, uh, are both fast and uh, he feels he can he can uh, take this race to Moritz Kranz, even though Moritz Kranz is going to be driving solo in this race, the only driver among the uh, 14 cars that started, because Jim Cox did not start this race, uh, yeah, and Moritz Kranz is the only one who will be driving solo. So he, when he comes in for his pit stop, uh, he will go out again and he'll drive to the, to the end of the race. All of the other teams, when they came, come in for their pit stop, will be changing drivers. Dan Goldberg working his way past the 47, trying to stay in touch in that red, white, and blue number six, trying to stay in touch with Josh Charger just in front in the white, orange, and black number 54. Keith Grant in the bright yellow 40 just in front of them. And now, as this race goes on, you talked about the consistency of Maurice Krantz, and I think that's what we're seeing as the lead beginning to just eke out a tenth of a second at a time, lap after lap, Jeremy. Yeah, and uh, the, the pace at the front is really hot right now because uh, Moritz Kranz on consecutive laps set fastest laps of the race uh, down now to a, a 118.6. And as I say, that down to Anton Camo has just gone faster in that fifth place car for JMF, JM, JMF Motorsports Conquest Racing. Uh, Anton Camo just turned a 118.363. That is uh, not hanging around. That is a new lap record here for the IMSA Prototype Challenge, and he's trying to reduce that deficit to Dan Goldberg in car number six. Round three of the IMSA Prototype Challenge Championship from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course continues. Krantz out in front. Josh Charger, Dakota Dickerson, pilots of the number 54, now in third. Keeping that championship in mind, Sarge knows he's going to hand it over to the much more experienced Dakota Dickerson at the stop. They're thinking championship for the Grant brothers, Keith and David, who run second right now. They're thinking about their first victory in this championship. They would like to get that on what they consider their home track. And there are a lot of other drivers in the field who want to see that checkered flag first. Krantz going solo. And Jeremy, think about it, on the pit stop, 
Does he have an advantage? He knows the racetrack that he's headed back out on after he makes that stop. He knows the condition of it. He knows the balance of the car. He knows all of that. The driver getting into these other machineries, their, their tires are gonna have to come up to temperature and they're gonna have to learn the racetrack as well as a problem for the 74. Yeah, that's Jason Rabe who's uh, turned that car around. He's got going again, really minimal loss of time there, maybe uh, three or four or five seconds. But uh, that's through the uh, madness section, just lost, lost over the top of the hill, did he? Yeah. And uh, we've seen a lot of drivers have done that over the years, Brian, have they not? Yeah. Uh, I've never done it there. No, nor have I. I've done it in multiple other places around the racetrack, but <laughs> I've not done it there. You were talking about staying on your line earlier for the lap traffic when the leaders go by, and that's exactly what a driver wants you to do. That's exactly what I tried to do when I was racing, was just stay on line and out of the way and let the fast guys go. And that's exactly what Kranz is hoping for as he will in undoubtedly catch more lap traffic throughout this event. But so far, his experience, I think, when you look at the racing that he's done, especially at Nürburgring and the length of that racetrack and what you've got to do to learn it and know it, he applies those skills all the North American tracks that he goes to. He's a very quick learner here at Mid-Ohio. This is a very technical racetrack. And for the team as well to get a handle on the setup on this car, when I spoke to him yesterday before qualifying, they weren't happy with it. They had a lot of understeer or a lot of push, meaning no bite on the front end at corner entry and mid-corner. They obviously got that taken care of. And in qualifying, he was very methodical and just quicker, quicker, quicker each lap. And then late in the session, bam, to the pole. Yeah, very impressive it was. And, you know, he's been super impressive this season. Uh, you know, dominant, absolutely dominant victory in the opening round of the championship at Daytona on the, uh, the roar before the Rolex 34 weekend. Uh, and uh, he was super fast at Sebring as well, along with his uh, regular co-driver, Lawrence Herr. They were on the pole position, set the fastest lap, led a goodly portion of the race, but uh, ended up finishing in the uh, fifth position there. But uh, Moritz Kranz, with all the experience, even though he hasn't been here before, he's learned this track very quickly and doing a really nice job at the head of the field. And that gap between first and second, now back to the bright yellow car of Keith Grant, who is still got his mirrors filled by Josh Sarche, is now out to 2.8 seconds. Fastest car on the track, though, at the moment is still Antoine Comeau. He's not as consistent as the race leaders in that car number 34 in the fifth position as Keith Grant goes across the line to complete that uh, 21. But uh, Como is he's, 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 he's quick. He's, he's uh, got that deficit down to Dan Goldberg now to under three seconds. It was uh, uh, almost five seconds just a couple of laps ago. So Como is charging hard up towards the keyhole, turns that right hand right-handed there, gets these onto the fastest part of the straightaway here. And that's a track uh, Brian has been uh, repaved. They've got a, a new section of, uh, of pavement on that uh, on that keyhole turn that launches the cars now onto the straight. Second place, Keith Grant in that bright yellow 40 has closed in on the rear wing and it was the lap traffic back through the back portion of the racetrack. I believe it yeah. was the number 60 of Hamilton really held Krantz up and that allowed Keith Grant to close that gap. And that's the give and take that you find around Mid-Ohio. I had said earlier, he's definitely gonna catch more lap traffic. He did, and you can tell what happens when you get it back there in Madness and in Thunder Valley so hard to get by and allows the competition to jump right back to the rear wing. Yeah, that's right. And uh, not only is Keith Grant right there, but only a couple of seconds back now is Josh Sarche in that third position. Right with him is Dan Goldberg. And only a couple of seconds behind him is uh, still making up that deficit is Antoine Comeau in car number 34 as well. So the top five cars separated by uh, only five seconds. 
Uh, as, <laughs> God, that was that was close. That was close. That was the championship leading car of Josh Jose, the 54. Ha he did everything he could, and it was a desperate move, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And Sarge said, I have to go. And I don't know that Hamilton knew that he was there. Down there, a little lockup under brakes, the rear end coming out just a little bit, manages to get through, and Dan Goldberg gets a clean shot through and almost got by Sarge as the 61 now backwards in the keyhole. You see that new concrete, the lighter colored pavement down around the red and white apex curbing. That's concrete and it's got tremendous grip. Used to be asphalt up until just a month or so ago. Crew here deciding that asphalt needed to be repaired and really the best way to repair it was to insert that concrete patch and it gives the car such a leap off the corner. Wonder though, and nobody really has had the long runs that like we're gonna see in this race. We wonder what it's gonna do to tire degradation because it's got such grip that left front really takes up a, a punishment as you compress coming off the keyhole. Now, Sarge beginning to pull out a little bit more over Dan Goldberg and for the leader, Maurice Krantz in the white and blue number 21, able to get by Steve Scullin in that green and white 46, a little bit easier, easier time than he had working through lap traffic and certainly an easier time than Sarge had just moments ago with the 60. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Bruce Hamilton gave him room there, but uh, uh, but uh, I think just Josh got got into the corner just a little bit too deep on the brakes and slid sideways and almost made contact. And hats off to both of those two there for for not making contact. I don't think they quite made contact, did they? But it was awfully close, certainly. Was awfully close. And I wonder, Jeremy, I'm watching the 54 a little more closely now. Apex out on some of these corners, and what I see. Looks like maybe there is some tire degradation. Perhaps this car beginning to get a little bit loose, meaning the rear end sliding around a little bit as he tries to apply the throttle coming off the corners. And that's something that the team may tell Josh, and it's something that he's not used to having. Hey, maybe a little turn of traction control, add a little more traction control, help save those rear tires a little bit if the car is beginning to get loose under acceleration. Yeah, you know, this is a it's a it's a low deg track as I say, low low tire degradation. It's, it's not particularly grippy around here. The car the tires tend to last longer here. It's not nearly abrasive as many other tracks on the circuit, is it? So uh, it's certainly not normally a factor here. But you know, with that with that new uh, concrete paving up in uh, is it concrete or is it uh, asphalt up in? It's the, concrete. Uh, it's concrete. Yeah, uh, it, you know, different dra different grip coefficients with the the, the asphalt and, and the concrete section up there. Uh, but uh, you, I, I, there've been quite a few teams uh, complaining, quote unquote, this weekend of, of the cars understeering, and that's uh, the critical corner course because it leads on to the longest straightaway here at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. But that is a common quote, complaint by drivers at this racetrack, and that is no grip in the front end. And that's why I said it's it's a very technical racetrack. The driver needs to understand the car and needs to be able to give the information to the engineer so the engineer can make the changes. And a lot of times you get tricked here in chasing the car when it's really a driver-induced issue. So you've got to be really careful and the driver and the engineer have to work really closely hand in hand. And there's got to be a lot of trust there that from the engineer's part that he's getting the proper information from the driver and a lot of data acquisition gone over to make sure that the driver's giving the car the proper input because you can chase your tail here all day long trying to find balance in the car and it really is an issue of the cars just not being driven the right way or put in the proper place on the racetrack. A lot of nuances here with camber, elevation change, compression and the like. And like I said, you can chase your tail. Yeah, you can. And uh, it's the uh, the sun is breaking through now, isn't it? It was it was overcast when we started this race. Now uh, pretty uh, bright shadows as they head underneath the bridge into turn one. So that's going to uh, change the dynamic here in terms of grip as well. This racetrack, Brian, is uh, it's always a it's a tricky place to come. It seems like every time you come here, even if the weather conditions are similar, the car feels different. I think that's Bruce Hamilton in the 60, I believe. Off. Yes, indeed. And 
I see the light still on, so I think he's got fire. Indeed, he does. The question is, can he get that car moving, those slick Michelin tires, to try to get it moving? That's at the exit of the carousel. Typically, you don't see a car off there, and Hamilton doing the right thing. Yeah, stop there, Bruce. Because you couldn't get it uphill, he needs to get that car looped around to get it back on the racetrack, and the officials will wait as long as they can. Let's see how it happens. Oh, he got loose coming off the carousel, Jeremy, and just never caught the rear end. It kept coming around, I believe. Yeah, I think as, uh, as the King Richard Petty would say, just got a little bit behind on his steering there, did uh, Bruce Hamilton coming off the uh, carousel. He's another guy who's been driving at former Atlantic cars for many, many years, and he's already lapped down now. It's just a shame because uh, he and Tony's Kazimitz, who, who will drive this car, Tony's massive from my experience. He's been Bruce's driver coach for many, many years and, and sharing the car in the prototype challenge for the last three years, super fast, uh, so fast. In fact, he set the fastest lap of the race last time out at Sebring. That's Tony's Kazimitz who will take over that number 60 car at the pit stop. I was talking to Bruce yesterday and the team and I was like, where's Tony East? And they were like, well, he's at Indy. He's not going to be yeah. here in time to do practice. So with the month of May starting at the Speedway and the GP yesterday, a lot of back and forth for guys like Tony East who are driver coaches and see that late move there. Hamilton knew that he had a problem at the at carousel last time out. He's off the pace. Really heads up driving on Bruce Hamilton's part there in the 60 to let the leaders through. Yeah, it was that, that was uh, heads up driving. And Tony, he was, he was uh, coaching for Paps Racing at uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course yesterday in the Road to Indy teams. And they had a great weekend. One of their drivers, Yuvra and Sundar Amur, the uh, one uh, one of a uh, couple of the races and now leads the championship. Uh, whoops, there's a spin for Antoine Camo. That's he, he closed right up onto that battle for third, fourth, and fifth, and now he's had a spin. That's going to lose a lot of ground. Yeah, that's up and over turn nine. Ooh, you, same he, as before. Yeah, I think he got wide at the entry, yeah. Jeremy. You could see dust and dirt coming off the left rear. And that's if you just miss the turn in there, it's off camber. It's hard to get the car in. And if you just miss the turn in, you're not going to get to the apex. You get out there in the marbles. Remember when I said I had never spun in turn five? <laughs> well, I know turn nine really well. <laughs> I'll just say that. I've been backwards there several times. It's a, a place that's easy to get it wrong. You got to kind of thread the needle up and over as you go through six, seven, and eight into nine, and it's easy to get lost and a little bit behind the car. Down yeah. the back straightaway, Krantz into turn four and the blue and white 21 and Lind ever so much closer each lap, clawing away a car length here, a car length there. And that's exactly what Dakota Dickerson is trying to do in the keyhole, that orange, blue and white number 54, trying to catch and get to the rear wing of David Grant and the yellow 40 just in front. Really good stuff uh, here amongst this uh, this battle. And uh, I think for Colin Mullen, he's uh, pretty content. I mean, he's not running for the championship, uh, missed the first round uh, of the season. So uh, he's just here to gain experience. And he's going to do that from a two-time winner of this race directly in front of him. And uh, the, the Grant brothers just ahead of uh, Dakota Dickerson as well, massively experienced here. David Grant just a little bit loose up and over the top of nine that time. We'll see if it gives any kind of an advantage at all to Dakota Dickerson. He'll close up under braking into the carousel. That's just the accordion effect, but not close enough to do anything. But the gap now between the leader, Krantz, in the 21, Lind in the six, just 1.1 second. Rasmus Lind on a charge through four, closes another car length through five, down to six. 32 minutes to go. Yeah, so still plenty of time in this race, that's for sure. And uh, Dakota Dickerson, you know, he knows uh, that uh, he, he has the, the time, he has the speed 
to find a way past David Grant, but uh, he's going to outfox his uh, more experienced rival here if he's going to find a way past. And meanwhile, up at the front, the experience of Rasmus Lind in open wheel cars at this track is certainly going to help him. But again, Moritz Kranz, even though this is his first time here, yet again, another super consistent lap there. Uh, 1 minute 18.00 it was uh, last time around. Uh, across the time this time, my uh, 118.3. So that's actually slowest lap for quite a long time. As a, a flash of the lights there from Rasmus Lind, just in case Moritz Kranz didn't know he was there. Now six tenths of a second. Another half a second gained for Rasmus Lind through the keyhole, down the back straightaway again with 31 minutes to go. Plenty of time. Catching Moritz Kranz is one thing, getting by him is another, but a half an hour is what you have to work with if you're Rasmus Lind. And I'm sure the crew on the radio with him saying, get there and then we'll figure out a way by. Yeah. First things first, right? Yep. Absolutely. Dakota Dickerson back in fifth, still working on David Grant. And for Dakota Dickerson, I've got to root for him a little bit because I was sitting in the trailer with the team yesterday saying, you do realize you're going for three in a row. The engineer stood up and walked out and said, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't, if we don't make it three in a row, it's good. We're going to blame it on you because I don't know that anybody knew that. So now you've added this pressure. So I'm going to be persona non grata around that camp. If the 54 doesn't come home with the victory. <laughs> Uh, trust me, Dakota knew that. <laughs> he doesn't, he yeah, but race car drivers know their record, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely right, they do. But uh, this is a super battle now. Moritz Kranzi are not taking any defensive lines there into the keyhole turn. He's just concentrating on making a good exit to that corner. Launch yourself onto the fastest part of the course because the best overtaking opportunity here at the mid Ohio Sports Car Course is at the, the, the end of this straight under heavy braking for turn four. And Kranz has got a good lead. Coming down that straight, this is Duquesne versus Ligier. A Duquesne for Moritz Kranz and Mueller Motorsports America in the lead of this race. In car number 21, Rasmus Lind, the Motel 6 Performance Tech Motorsports Ligier in second place. He's a faster car, but can he find a way around? Perhaps a better drive off the keyhole that time. Maybe that little bit of top speed edge that the Duquesne chassis had. But for Rasmus Lind, not able to close up in the braking zone there in turn four, really seems to be good in the mechanical grip sections. We said that earlier, and he'll close up in the braking zone here into the carousel. But you cannot get a pass done there, at least cleanly. And Kranz just a little bit loose coming off the corner as he exited the carousel. What can Rasmus Lynn do at the exit of turn one? Will he get a good drive and a problem? I believe that's the 74. Courtney Crone, that's in a bad place. That's up and over the hill in turn nine. It's blind. And the question is, can she get past? Oh, no. oh and that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, this is, I tell you who this, what this is good news for is Dakota Dickerson, because oh. this is going to bring out a full course caution. You got to believe that it will, as they're going to have to get the car slowed down. Courtney Crone, that off track excursion there at the exit of nine. And I talked about what a great job the crews had done, and they had gotten that smooth at the exit. But there is still that little undulation because the earth falls away out towards the tire wall. And these cars have such low ride height. Really, the better decision would have been drive down the edge of the racetrack to get back on, but Courtney Crow now stranded there and full course caution is out, Jeremy. Yeah, that's a scary place to be sitting because it's, it's oh, a blind, yeah. blind corner there. You can't see that there is a car spun at the exit. She just uh, tried to carry a bit too much speed into the corner, didn't let the car run wide enough and kind of pinched it down a little bit. The back end got away from her and she goes spinning across that exit curb. And that's a, uh, that's a, that's a shame for Courtney. She was doing a nice job there, holding down the uh, ninth position. Uh, she was a, a lap down to the leaders.
restarts happen on the front straightaway. The main start happens on the back straight. Hinman in that bright yellow number seven lines up third. He is going to be putting some pressure on Rasmus Lind in front. What does Lind have for Maurice Krantz? And here we go, lined up. Green flag is out, and Kranz has 22 and a half minutes that he needs to focus forward and try to keep that car up front. Dakota Dickerson inside David Grant, down towards the keyhole. He forces his way in. Can he keep the car on the apex, get the drive off, and stay in front? Grant slides a little bit wide. Dakota Dickerson has some breathing room, and now Colin Mullen in the red and white 34 next to pounce on Grant. Can he get by? What does Rasmus Lind have for the leader? Nothing in the break zone. He looks deep, but not going to get it done. David Grant, the bright yellow 40, defending, Oops. and Mullen now off. Keeps the car going. Good for Colin Mullen to keep the car going, but that is going to set him well back. Tried to stay on the outside of David Grant there through turn four. Just got out to the dirty part of the racetrack and couldn't keep it on the island. Meanwhile, Rasmus Lynn really pressuring Moritz Krantz. Great restart there for Moritz Kranz. Uh, very, very impressive because Rasmus Lind, he was chomping at the bit there trying to make that pass. Trent Himmen right behind him. A really opportunistic move for Dakota Dickerson to find a way past David Grant. He is now going to be right on this tail. Four cars head across the line to complete their 60th lap. This is going to be some... Remaining. Yeah, this is going to be some great racing, Jeremy. 21 minutes to go. You look at this lineup up front, it is some of the most talented young drivers you will see anywhere. Looking back further, the white number three, Mike Skeen, inside the 60 of Tonis Kazimitz. He picks up a position. Could Skeen get up to the front and join this battle? Yeah, actually, the, the, that's not a battle for, for position because Tonis Kazimitz in number 60 is a couple of laps down after that spin early on for Bruce Hamilton, but uh, Tonys is fast, uh, and he's uh, not going to worry about the fact he's a couple of laps down. He's gonna, just going to drive this car, number 60, while for racing DJ as fast as he possibly can, and that is fast. Something we haven't seen all day long. Maurice Grant starting to go defensive. Middle of the racetrack in the braking zone in turn four. Rasmus Lind, I believe, Jeremy, has the faster car, but how do you get by? We talked about it. 2.2 miles, 13 corners worth of frustration and the opportunities to pass very limited here at Mid-Ohio. You've got to get it done and you've got to do it with confidence and some aggression. Yeah, this, it, it's the aggression factor. That's going to be the critical thing for Rasmus Lin. You know, how long does he wait? Uh, I'm sure he was hoping to try and make a, a move at the restart, but it was a brilliant restart for Moritz Kranz. It really was. I mean, that's not a, a bronze driver restart. I can tell you that. That was seriously impressive because uh, uh, he is uh, he was able to, to get right on the pace. The, the tires would have cooled down considerably, but uh, he was able to absolutely run the, the same pace, if not even a little bit faster than Rasmus Lind on that first restart lap. A little bit surprising to see Trent Henman not a little bit closer, and I think you pointed it out, Jeremy, that the balance of that number seven racing entry, just not the way they wanted that Ligier. They won at Sebring. Great drive by Alan Brynjolfsson and Trent Henman there. But, you know, this is a team that's focusing in multiple classes of IMSA, and they, they ran the Michelin Pilot Challenge yesterday, also running in the prototype challenge category and just really hard, I think, for that Mike Johnson red, led team to make sure that every car that they run in all of the different classes is absolutely the best. Really easy to be just a skosh off here at Mid-Ohio and not be able to attack. Henman trying to hold on to that last podium position. Dakota Dickerson just behind him in the 54 wants it. Speaking of want it, Rasmus Lynn wants the lead Kranz with a good job of maintaining it right now, but let's look at the end of the back straightaway and see what happens there. That's where Lynn, very aggressive last time, and Kranz had to be defensive. Yeah, this is great stuff. And uh, for that Archangel Motorsports team, uh, the uh, Michael Johnson there, it's pretty much three separate operations that runs. They run the Aston Martin for Trent Hinman and, uh, and Alan Brynjolfsson in the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series. They raced yesterday. 
it also involved in running uh, an Acura GT3 car for Magnus Racing in this afternoon's WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race as well. But it's really there's really no crossover between the crew members on those three organisations other than Michael Johnson himself calling the strategist. But that, that car number three is one to watch. <laughs> Mike Skeen, he's got he's found a way past David Grant, and he is now on this the tail of this five-car battle for the lead. Well, I was going to say, I know whose car is working, and that's Mike Skeen. He just, it, we saw him get past Tony Kazimitz just a couple of laps ago, and he is charged right up to join this battle. The first four cars in line, Skeen, the fifth car, that white and light blue, number three, and he is setting a torrid pace right now. Lynn now falling into the clutches of Mike Skeen and the leader Kranz having to deal with lap traffic through Thunder Valley and up into the carousel. So a really good stint in that junior three racing machine, car number three by uh, Terry Olsen, who's a, a long time radical racer. And now he's the driver coach, Mike Skeen up into third position and looking to get second. He's uh, got that podium position already as they put a lap there on uh, Danny Koki, car number 61. That's the uh, Conquest Racing machine running second in the P32 category behind the number 24 of uh, Francesco Melandri and Lance Wilson. Tony's Kazmitz in that carbon fiber number 60, that carbon fiber color. It's, I, I kind of quite like it. I know a lot of other people like the brightly painted cars, but that bare carbon fiber of the 60 looks menacing as he's working his way through. And talk about menacing. Mike Skeen menacing Rasmus Lind in the six right now. And I think the tires are gone for Rasmus Lind. He's holding on and Skeen really putting pressure on now. Dakota Dickerson hanging in there. The balance is good for Mike Skeen. He's going to get a run up and over. Oh. Nine. This is a difficult place to get anything done at all. And Rasmus Lynn, some, some, the handling is going away. No, Something's up with that car. Yeah, I think he's got a puncture as well. All of a sudden, I saw a puff of smoke from that car as it crested a rise in turn six. I think Lind has a puncture. I think the tire may have been going down for the last lap yeah. or two. That's what we saw, Jeremy. Yeah. And Lynn now on pit road, second place gone for him. Mike Skeen elevated up. Dickerson to third, David Grant to fourth, and Stephen McAleer in fifth. Boy, bad luck for two of the, contend yeah. the uh, contenders there. First of all, number seven, then number six, the, the Model 6 car of Rasmus Lind. He's onto the pit lane, and he's going to fall to the back of the pack. That's really up. Was that an engine? Yeah. yeah. Are I they think, changing the tire? I don't know. I think something frustration. was amiss. I don't know if the tire went down or perhaps a suspension issue. It's the left rear. He stays to the inside. You see some smoke there. I don't know. Yeah, perhaps a broken problem. suspension component on the left side. Hard to tell. You can't really see it, but you can tell the handle goes away quickly. Dickerson gets caught up behind him, but Rasmus Lynn does a fantastic job of holding on to that car, keeping it in one piece and getting it to pit lane as he was swarmed by those competitors behind him. I think it's more than a tire. I think it may yeah. be a suspension issue. Yeah, well, some, so, something mechanical, that's, that's for sure. And that's a great shame for that team. They that's, had a, a yeah. brilliant second place run at Sebring, looking good here. He was uh, kind of biding his time, the youngster there, Rasmus Lind. I think he, he knew he had a faster car. He was just going to look for the opportunity, but I think there was something going wrong with that car for the last half. Yeah, dozen I laps, agree. So. And such a shame for him. You talk about the great drive. Dan Goldberg, who started that car, what a great drive for him as well. He was third in the Drivers' Championship last year, only two points behind second, and he has come a long way as a race car driver, and he put in a great performance here this weekend, and that's just the ups and downs of motorsports. It's not over till it's over. And with just about three minutes to go in the race here at Mid Ohio, it is day done for the six. Behind the wall they go. So something mechanical. Krantz out in front, three seconds in hand 
over Mike Skeen, then Dakota Dickerson, David Grant, Stephen McAleer. Okay, so how much speed does Mike Skeen have? We will find out. The bad news for him, he's got a, a three-second deficit and only a couple laps remaining. I don't think it'll be white flag this time around. I think we're going to have two more laps in this race. Yeah, yes, we are. We're going to have two more laps, but uh, there's a fair bit of ground that Mike Skeen in that kind of a three that Cops Industries cars. And uh, a shout out here to the Palmer family who generally drive this car. Some uh, medical issues in that in that in that family. We wish them the very best to get them back behind the wheel of the car soon. Absolutely. But Mike Skeen is pressing hard in second place. Know that your car is in good shape and obviously well prepared. That's for certain because Mike Skeen is driving it to the front right now. Kranz, the lead has diminished 2.1 seconds, but only a couple of laps to go inside a minute and 15 seconds down the back straightaway one more time, but no traffic in front. That's good news for Kranz, not so good for Mike Skeen. He's got clear sailing to try to get to the rear wing of the 21 but he's not going to have any help i don't believe oh. anyone holding up the 21. last time around uh mike ski was uh, eight tenths of a second quicker 2.1 seconds behind he was as he crossed the line two laps to go <laughs> you could be right with him <laughs> it's right there <laughs> yeah 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 but we talked about it catching Maurice Krantz is one thing getting by him especially on the last lap maybe something entirely different but there is no quit in Mike Skeen. That junior three entry charging 2.1 seconds at the line. The last time by white flag waves. The gap has been cut to inside one second. Running out of time, running out of distance, but not running out of desire. Mike Skeen pressing, closing, closing into the keyhole under heavy braking. The gap has diminished. It's now only about four or five car lengths. The Skeen have enough. The best passing zones on the racetrack are soon to be behind him. <laughs> if he's going to get this done, Jeremy, we talked about aggression earlier. It may take a fair amount of that to get this done. It's going to take a lot of that, but he's not going for the championship. <laughs> he's just going for race wins. Uh, he was 1.1 seconds quicker on the last lap. The gap as it crossed the line to begin this white flag lap was less than a second. Mike Skeen, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Maurice Krantz, he and Lawrence Hare, they won at Daytona in the opening round of the Prototype Challenge Championship for 2021. Three pole positions in a row. Can they find their way back to the top step at Mid-Ohio? It's a solo drive for Maurice Krantz. Will it be a solo victory through the carousel? One last time, checkered flag awaits. Krantz with the victory at Mid-Ohio. But for Mike Skeen, what a drive. Just four tenths of a second at the line. And this is what we've come to expect from IMSA Prototype Challenge. Welcome back to the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course on a beautiful May afternoon. Round three of the 2021 IMSA Prototype Challenge Series is in the books. The 21 from Mjolnir Motorsports America has found victory lane for the second time this year. Let's hear from the winner, Maurice Krantz. Yeah, it was, um, we came here without testing because travel restrictions and everything is a little bit difficult this year. Um, yeah, but the team did an awesome job with no testing to get a car started in, in two sessions. Perfect job from the team. And um, yeah, in the race at the beginning, it was just managing the tires, actually see what's going on. And after the restart, I had quite a hard time. The first call left to get the tires up to temperature. The, um, 
But for some reason, the people started to drop back. I had no idea what happened, but I am uh, happy I take it. <laughs> it's my first full season racing in the States, and I just love it. It's um, just awesome the fans to see fans again at racetrack and drive all the old iconic tracks. And um, yeah, I couldn't be happier. It's just perfect. Well, congratulations to our winner as we look at the unofficial results. As we said, Kranz wins from the pole for the second time this season. Remember, he also stood in victory lane at Daytona in round one. Mike Skeen and Terry Olson, what a drive today. They brought home the number three machine in second after starting seventh and overcoming a penalty for a pit stop infringement. That is the best finish for Junior 3 Racing and Prototype Challenge competition to date. Dakota Dickerson and Josh Charget in the MLT Motorsports 54. They finished third, their third podium of the season, and a solid run for brothers Keith and David Grant puts them in fourth at the checkered flag. Rounding out the top five is the Robillard Racing number 43, driven by Joe Robillard and Stephen McAleer, and you can expect those two to remain solid throughout 2021. Also taking a look now at LMP32, where Sean Creech Motorsports, the 24, driven by Francesco Melandre and Lance Wilsey, they finished first in that class for the Gen 1 spec LMP3 machinery. Moving on to points now after round three, Krantz with two wins moves to the top of the chart now and is 40 points up on second place Dakota Dickerson and Josh Charget, who led the championship coming into mid-Ohio. Keith and David Grant making a statement there in third. Alan Brynjolfsson and Trent Hinman fourth after some bad luck today and holding down the fifth spot in the championship is the team of Scott Huffaker and Steve Scullin. Next up for Prototype Challenge is round four from Watkins Glen International during the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship Sprint Race Weekend. You'll see all the action live on track pass from NBC Sports Gold Friday, July 2nd at 11.40 a.m. Eastern Time and also right here on NBCSN July 13th at 7 p.m. The IMSA Prototype Challenge drivers delivered as expected today with some great racing throughout the field here at Mid-Ohio. Reach Grant certainly has plenty to celebrate. He leaves the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course with not only the race win, but also the championship lead. So congratulations to the entire Mueller Motorsports America team on a great weekend. For Jeremy Shaw and our entire motorsports broadcast team, I'm Brian Till. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And remember, NBC Sports is your exclusive home for IMSA Sports Car Racing in 2021. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of the International Motorsports Association. We would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.